Jeff, how good is it to see Tyler squeeze, especially considering, you know, what he's coming off surgery? Yeah, you know, he, he, he looks, um, he looks uh, like he's got great energy. Um, he's been on pucks. I, mean, I think he's always a, kind of a, a junkyard dog in terms of how he plays, but um, he looks like he's skating well, which is great. Again, you know, we've been through uh, multiple, you know, over the years, you have different guys that have had major back surgery and, and some react, um, you know, sometimes the damage is more significant than others. And so you just don't know. And so it's been great to see him skating well, feeling good, uh, and obviously playing good hockey. How crucial is he just... You know, he seems to have a knack for getting open and, and mm-hmm. being by the net at opportune times. Yeah, he, he's, uh, I think Bert's a, a winning hockey player. I've said that before. Um, you know, when he first came to play for me, it was in Grand Rapids in the playoffs. And, and as a guy coming from junior and, and stepped right in. And uh, as I remember, actually was sick for the first two games. And we went down 0-2 and we ended up on the Series 3-2 against Toronto. Like, he's been, he's a good, he's a good player. He's a winner. He's somebody that... Um, you know, that, that I think is the type of player you want on your team. And, um, you know, he does a lot of things well. He's a good defensive player. He goes the net hard. He wins puck battles. And he's got skill. How will you handle things Saturday? I mean, just you won't need to call anybody up, or could you for one game if you needed to? Uh, we'll see where we're at. Um, we certainly could. Um, but we'll see. You know, we've got uh, – uh, we, we, with even with Albert, we have as of we speak today, we have twelve healthy right. forwards. But we'll see where we're at, um, you know, after Thursday, and um, and we obviously have AD that that you know there's two D sitting out that are good NHL defensemen. So um, you know, eleven and seven is always a possibility as well. So we'll make sure we're taking care of uh, you know come come Saturday. But just because I haven't dealt with something like this before, you would be able to call somebody up if needed. Uh, it just depends, you know, when you got to do certain things to create roster spots. So, um, um, so anyways, we'll, we'll take that as it comes. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Anton? Yeah, Jeff, uh, in, in three games, uh, you haven't trailed yet, except at the end of the, the Tampa game, just, you know, having playing with the lead or, or being tied, just what does that do as far as being able to s- just stay within your structure and, and you know, not deviate from the game plan? Yeah, I mean, I think it's easier to stay in your structure when you have the lead for certain. Um, I think it's, um, um, you know, you're just going to have, I think, a, a more successful chance or better, better chance to win on a consistent basis if you're able to play the lead. It certainly doesn't mean you can't come from behind. And you get into the third period, though, know, if you're, if you're, you know, I think statistically it would be pretty uh, one side of the team that has a lead generally wins. doesn't mean it can't happen, um, but but that's what happens, you know, so – or at least that thing goes to overtime like our Tampa did game did. Um, so certainly it helps you stay in your structure. And, and um, uh, so, I, you know, is it important? Yes. Do we want to have it every night for sure? Or are we going to know and we got to find ways to win when we don't? And, uh, you know, you talked just about uh, going 11 and 7, something that you did uh, a lot last year. I don't know if it was out of necessity because of injuries or, or just because you wanted to go 11 and 7. Uh, just what are the just – the advantages, uh, especially when you've got eight NHL defensemen going mm-hmm. uh, 11 7. There's advantages and disadvantages, and I think every situation is unique. And, and because it fit for our team last year, doesn't necessarily mean it fits for our team this year. And as I said probably a few days ago, um, you know, I think especially early in the season, I'm not in a rush to do that because it, it does. You know, it does two things. Your, your D obviously have seven D, so you're usually rotating guys in and out, and so it's hard to build chemistry with a partner at that point. And, and up front, you're actually rotating guys in and out, and it's hard to build as much chemistry. So, you know, I think at this point in the year, I prefer twelve and six. Um, you know, how many games into it does it? I don't know. We'll see. You know, so far I've made the decision twelve and six was the way we we're going to go. Uh, we'll see, um, you know, how, how we continue uh, forward, if I want to keep doing that, or if I want to try 11-7, but it certainly is a possibility if I want to at some point. But I won't do it necessarily just to get a guy in. Like, I'm going to do it because I think it's the best thing for our lineup. If I want to get a guy in, I'll take somebody out and get him in. Thanks. Yep. Max Boltman. Hey, Jeff, with the, I guess, few shots you guys give up for a lot of last night, is there anything you kind of attribute that to, whether it's something that you're doing, is it the ozone pressure combination? Uh, I would say almost specifically the ozone pressure in last night's game. I just thought, um, 
um, you know, it wasn't a low score, a low shot game both ways. It was a low shot game, shot game for one team, and that's generally because of the the, the difference in, in ozone and D zone time. And then ultimately, um, you know, throughout the course of the game, you know, we we had the majority of the ozone time. So I would say the ozone pressure times for us was was great. Um, your best defense is when you when you're in the ozone. That's your best defense. And, and if we can have more games, we can tilt the ice like that. We're gonna have a, a good chance to win on a, on a nightly basis. And I think so far it seems ice time between the four lines relative. Like you, you were talking about yesterday, the kind of the four line presence. You mm -hmm. How much of a priority, I guess, is that to have? Uh, I, you know, I think we'd like to be. Every game takes a little bit of life of its own. Um, you know, for example, Vancouver played their top guns a ton of minutes on back to back on the back half because I think they were feeling it, and then in the third they kind of heated up and, and they just kept putting them out there. And, I, and I'm certainly not opposed to doing that with our group either at times, but. I think it's important um, that we win as a hockey team and, and to win as a hockey team, you know, you have to have guys play uh, and, and everybody have, have different ways to, to make a positive impact. And, and um, you know, I, I feel confident with putting any of those lines on the ice against certain uh, other teams, real good lines. That's a really good position to be in when you trust your lines. If, if you're really worried about putting a line out there because they're just not up to par defensively, it's hard to get them out there lots. You're constantly pulling them off the ice. So I think the fact that that they've all kind of earned some trust is a, is a great thing for us and it allows us way more flexibility to, to play different groups. And then what were your kind of thoughts on Cider yesterday? On Cider? Yeah. And how he played? Yeah. Uh, you know, I thought, I thought he played good, actually. I thought uh, he's made steps in the right direction as a, as a player. And I thought, uh, um, I don't know if it was his, you know, I, I, I think it might have been maybe his best game. And that's a positive thing. I think he's... Definitely, um, you know, again, taking steps in the right direction. He's going he's gonna to have uh, a lot of steps forward. He's going to have a few steps backwards that he's going to learn from. And, and, you know, one play in the first, that, that was a turnover that, that we talked about that's not needed. But other than that, I thought he played pretty good hockey. Yep. Ted Colton? I think you've talked about it before, but do you guys break as a staff into five-game segments or ten-game segments? Uh, five-game segments, yeah, five-game segments. And what do you guys look for? Keys or specifically in the <laughs> well, if you, if you if you make the if you get uh, six out of ten points every five game segment, if you extrapolate that over eighty two games, including the couple extra games that you have in there, you're about ninety eight points for the season, which in the in the generally is a playoff team. So it helps kind of give you a um, you know parameter where you're at, and and um, within that, you know, what are the the process uh, stats that, that we're, you know, I don't necessarily want to get into all of them, but what are the, some of the process stats and how are those process stats going within those five game segments? And then I would say where 10 game segment comes into, into play would be more monitoring a player's uh, um, performance. And because again, the, 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 the lesser amount of time, um, you know, the, the, smaller the sample size it's hard sometimes so we try to get about 10 game segments and then see where players are at and we've got some performance indicators that we keep for each player to see you know we just want to make sure they're heading the right direction if they're heading the wrong direction we can kind of have conversations with them at that point instead of wait till 80 games in the numbers are nice but man i mean it's just got to be nice to build this confidence mm -hmm. a little bit just knowing that hey you guys can win some games here mm -hmm. no there's no doubt you know i think uh uh, you know, winning is way more fun than losing. Uh, that's a fact. Um, you, just, you know, we're in that business and, and um, you know, I think you feel better about yourself. And then, but the other thing I know for sure is this is a, an every night league and we've played three games and we're going to have a game tomorrow night against a, a good team and we got to find a way to come on and win. Um, so, uh, again, we better be super cognizant of that. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Those are all the questions we had for Coach Blashill. That's all for us today.